friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Stringworks Workshop. Got a little different subject for you today. If you are any kind of a woodworker at all, and notice I didn't say a serious woodworker, I said any kind of woodworker at all, then you need to be concerned about dust collection in your shop. Dust collection is a major pain in the neck, <clears throat> and it's a source of health issues. Uh, just ask the spots on my lungs. At least that's what I probably attribute them to. Um, just in case anybody's concerned, the spots on my lungs have been there for decades and haven't gotten any worse and have been checked and doesn't seem to be a problem, but they're there. And I assume that they're there from the lack of dust collection that I used to have. And I've gotten to the point in my shop now where uh, I'm almost at lack of dust collection again. And why do I say that? Well, it's those cheap plastic dust gates. Uh, you buy them at the woodworking store and they seem to work fine day one, day two they're still okay, day three not so good, day four they suck. And that's just about the way they go. They clog up with dirt. They don't have a way to keep themselves cleaned out. Uh, as you shut the gate they you know, press wood fiber and stuff down into the gate and then the gate gets where it doesn't shut, it doesn't shut and it, it, it eventually expands to where it's wide open almost. And it's just not good and you lose suction. Every time you lose a little suction, you lose a lot of suction at the point where you really need it. Uh, so if you're losing a little suction at every gate, then where you really need it when you have a full gate open, you have very little suction there. Uh, it's just a fact. You need an efficient dust collection system for your shop to work well. I'm going to show you how to make the dust collection gates that I made. I'm not going to take credit that it's a totally original idea because I have seen others make these on uh, YouTube. I will tell you that I think my method is simple, uh, efficient. I think it's uh, fairly well explained for you. You should be able to make your own with, with little effort. Uh, I made 13 gates in basically under a day. I probably could have gotten them done in a half a day after, you know, that first prototype one took me a little longer is really what it boils down to. So I'm going to save you the prototype here by giving you the dimensions and how to make them and I think you're going to enjoy this. So please stick with me and I'll show you how we fix this problem. No dust collection system is going to get it all, but you know, some are more efficient than others and this one is not very efficient at the moment. Just thought I would show you the problem. You see down in there, that doesn't close. My finger, you can see my finger through on the other side. That is shut as far as it will shut. That's because stuff gets caught down in there and it won't go any further shut. You can see it, that's as far as it goes. You can even hear the grid in there. Now, I'm not saying these won't get some grit in there because they probably will, but hopefully we can push it straight on through. There's an example of what gets down in there. I'm digging it out from here. But I really got tired of taking these apart and trying to clean all the grit out of them. Um, still in all, there's a lot of grit in there. It still won't close. So, you know, anyway, real pain in the neck. Some of the plastic gates have broken, like this is one that went to my jointer and I had to now quit using it and just block it off with cardboard. Uh, it's just a pain. The camera is presently mounted five or six feet away from this tree. You can hear, I believe, the suction being lost through this tree. Listen. I don't know if you can hear that sound that's coming out of this right here, but there's a lot of suction loss. This is supposedly shut all the way down, and yet I can feel suction going through here. Not a lot, but some. I mean, it wouldn't be very strong, probably not even strong enough. You can just see it barely pulls my shirt sleeve. That's how little it is, but it is there. And so there's a loss here. There's a loss on every single one of these gates. And I have a bunch of gates. Now, let's do a suction test and see if we improve anything. 
I have I have this completely open now, so there is suction now. You can see it's pulling my shirt in. Let's see if it will lift this box. It, it, it draws to it, but it won't lift it off the table. Now, granted, that's fairly heavy. I mean, I'm gonna say it weighs at least, it probably weighs a pound, but I'm just feeling like this thing ought to at least lift that up. I don't know if we'll have any improvement off of that, and maybe when we're done, maybe it'll lift that box. That's what I'm hoping. Spoiler alert, I'm going to show you the end result first. This box weighs one pound, 1.2 ounces, or 486 grams. My dust hose would not pick this up before, wouldn't even sort of lift it. Now, watch how it works. It sucks down to it and lifts it right up. Now, you know, it's heavy, so, you know, but it will pick it right up, so you can see. I promise you before, it wouldn't even move it. It wouldn't even begin to pick it up. That's how inefficient my system was before. And, spoiler alert, I'm gonna show you what they look like finished before we actually go to the process of building them. This is what they look like. I, I have waxed this one. You know, I, I just used a paste wax on it so that they slide easy, and it slides real easy, as you can see. They're self-cleaning in that they're not pushing into a, a dead-end channel. In other words, they're pushing straight through this opening, and therefore, you know, if there's dust in there, it'll pop out here and, and it's cleaned out, see? So there's, there's not too much way for dust to build up in here. And you can see how it works. Now on this side, I have the uh, lightweight plastic pipe fitting. This would be like a uh, coupling if you were gonna, in, in your plastic pipe will fit in here tightly. So this is just a coupling that's been sawn in half and you can, so you can get two gates out of one coupling basically is what it amounts to. This black plastic is the thing that goes to your corrugated pipe that runs over to your machine. And your corrugated pipe uh, is meant to fit on this so it, so you don't need any kind of adapters when you're doing it this way. Now, I have only built the four inch gates. Some people would say, what about two inch gates? Well, I'm gonna show you that in the other room, why I don't think you need two inch gates at all, and I think you're better off without them for a lot of reasons, and I'll show you. So here you go. I'm gonna give you a lot of tips and tricks about your dust collection system in general, in addition to making these gates. So follow along, I think you're gonna enjoy this. In terms of building your dust collection gates, there's only a few materials that you need to go purchase. Now this is assuming you've already got a dust collection system and you're wanting to improve it. If you don't already have one, then you may need to buy some additional parts. Since I already had a dust collection system that just wasn't efficient, I was able to use these black parts off of those existing gates. If you don't have those parts, you will probably have to buy some of those. The good news is you buy half as many as you want to build because you can bust them in half and use both halves. To me, that's probably the most efficient way to do it because these are fairly inexpensive. You can buy you know, one and get two out of it. So there you go. Same way with this side. Now this is the uh, the lightweight, you know, drain pipe, four inch drain pipe that you buy. This is not the Schedule 40, this is the lightweight stuff. So again, these are the couplings. You buy half as many as you want to build gates. In other words, you want to build 10 gates, you need five couplings, just that simple. Because you can cut these directly in half and uh, use both halves. The plywood you need to buy, or at least that I bought, is uh, this is called ply floor underlayment. It's made in the USA and it comes in a four by five foot sheet. Four by five foot sheet. They call it quarter inch, but technically it's, uh, it's only about two hundred thousandths of an inch thick. So you're losing about fifty thousandths there and they still call it a quarter inch. <laughs> but just so you know. But actually it's perfect for these dust gates. It's very high quality stuff. Like there's almost no fill anywhere and there's no knots. And the other side's even better. You know, it's really high grade stuff. I bought this at Menards, local box store. 
There's a close-up of the tag. You can pause your video and take a look at that. And one sheet of that plywood is all you need to make quite a few dust gates. I made 13 and I still have enough left over to probably could have made one more. I've spent time figuring out how big I want this and I'm going to make one prototype to see how well it works before I go into deep production. But uh, basically I'm going to rip a uh, piece out of this that's 7 inches wide. going to cut off two six inch pieces of this and now I need some half inch strips that I'm going to use uh, for spacers actually I think what I'll do is I'll cut a third piece the same length and then I'll cut the strips out of that my prerogative to change my mind I design on the fly that's how I do things most of the time so now we can use one of these to cut strips out of. Well, the idea is I'll put these through here and, you know, like this, and then we're making a little box, and then there will be a slider that will slide all the way through. This will send shivers up the spine of many of you. This is a very dangerous type of circle cutter. It's what I have, and I'm going to use it, but it has this spinning deal here. I used to actually use it to cut rosettes in guitars, believe it or not. And this, this is the cutter out here. This is just the centering point. And this is spinning around, and it's incredibly dangerous. I've just got a hard wood board clamped very tightly to the table. I also have a backer piece of plywood here that I can push up against there. And then finally I have the piece that I want to cut the hole in and I can push that against there. I've already spent a lot of time with a small bit centering it on my X. I, you know, I, I drew a line across here so that I could find the center of the panel and then I can line that up with the bit and you know you can't get your hands up here at all so you know this is to keep it from spinning this backboard and it also helps me for my location and then I can just hold it on the front here and hopefully things should go okay but I gotta be honest this is scary so here we go well I think it's close I can actually see the line there I could probably punch it through now but I gotta go a little deeper or get a different cutter. Something's gotta give. Well, there you go. Now you got a perfect hole in that little tiny piece of wood. For those of you keeping score, I don't have much better luck with those circle cutters either, those ones with the teeth. Uh, I have all kinds of problems with those. So this actually works pretty well. It cut a perfectly smooth hole. So I just have to be extra careful, that's all. I have to admit, I'm incredibly tempted to use CA glue and do a very quick glue up on this, especially since this is a prototype. But because I'm pretty sure it's going to work and I don't want to screw it up, I don't like CA glue on wood any more than I have to use it. I just, I've had more trouble with it turning loose than anything else. So, and I know it's going to take quite a bit longer, but I'm going to go ahead and use regular tight bond on this. For the record, this is tight bond original. Not that it really makes much difference on something like this. I'm lining it up with the outside edge. That should keep it more consistent. Someone the other day reminded me of a glue removal trick that I've done before, but it's been years. And that is to take a straw and, and cut it at an angle and then run it down along your joint. And it really does do a good job of taking the glue out. Um, I've done that before, but it's been years. So I thank you for the reminder. I kind of had forgotten about that. But it, it is a good way to get glue out of a tight spot. All right, I'm going to put a very thin line of glue on here as thin as I can get it and I'm putting it toward the outside edge so that hopefully there won't be much squeeze out on the inside. 
I'm also, by the way, putting the smoothest side of the plywood inside. I'm going to wax the inside of this with just this uh, Renaissance wax. I just think that might help it slide a little bit better. This is the inside of this one. Now, I don't want to get this on the glue. Uh, I may have to just kind of fake it here and just get it around the inside edge and not get too crazy with it here. I don't see any squeeze out on the inside. Now, if my wife hadn't loaned my brad nailer to my daughter, I would actually brad nail this too. But since I don't have the brad nailer, that's kind of hard to do. Although I do have some very tiny finish nails, I may just drive some in there. You know, the old fashioned hammer and nail. Okay, so now we have a pretty good start for a gate. Now we have to have our slider and we have to have a hole cut in the slider. But let's make the slider first and then we'll worry about cutting out holes and things. And we also have to have a handle on each end to keep it from sliding all the way through. A stop, if you will, and it's kind of a stop, combination stop handle. And then we have to put some lips on here for the pipe to stick to. And I'm going to use the old pieces, I think. And I think I'm just going to silicone glue them on and I think that will be perfect. I just have this mocked up right at the moment. I have the piece that I just cut as the slider slid through the hole. And then, you know, I took some of these half inch strips and I put on the end of here, thinking that that might just be the best handle there is. Just as a prototype, if I draw the hole here, that's where the hole would be. Then I want to be able to pull the hole pretty much to the outside, that gives me this much, you know, grabbing uh, distance or, you know, closure from the hole for suction and whatever. Then if I put the other half inch on this side and draw the line, so that would tell me my length that I need. And that length turns out to be about 12 inches, 12 and an eighth, 12 and an eighth inches. For my millimeter friends, that's about 307 millimeters, something like that, 30.7 centimeters. Now, the distance here is about an inch and a half. The distance here is about an inch and a half. So I should be able to use my same jig to cut these holes, which, so I'm gonna go with that, at least on this prototype and see what that looks like. And I'm gonna go ahead and just use the extra eighth there, even though, you know, 12 inches, it's tempted to just cut it to 12 inches. But I'm going to go ahead and leave the extra eighth. And, uh, well, I thought I had clicked the button and I didn't. I've, I've glued these two half inch strips to the ends. And then I'm just squaring them up by holding them down on the flat table and making sure everything's in contact and, uh, both ends are touching the table like that, and that kind of squares them up pretty well, actually. Yeah, I'm impatient, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put a couple of nails through these handles for now. You know, on in, when I do the real world one, I can just leave things set overnight. Again, I'm going to put a little wax on this door. I could probably wait on this wax stuff until the end, uh, and probably will on the real ones. Um, but that really actually slides much better than you might think. It, it doesn't really, it's not very hard to slide it, yet it's, you can tell it's got friction all the way. This is going to be the part going out to the tool. Just prior to putting the silicone on this, I'm going to clean this with acetone. Wow, look at the dirt. <laughs> I'm surprised. Wow, I didn't expect that. I'm 
We want to make sure we get a good solid bead all the way around so we don't have any air leaks. Yeah, that's a messy process, but I'll get better at that. These pipe couplings fit my pipe that I have in the shop. It's just the thin wall uh, drain pipe. I cut this one right in half with my uh, chop saw and uh, I cut it right on that inner, inner seam that was in there. Put that on here, silicone that to this. That's the best I've got. I don't think that's a great connection, but that's the best I got for right now. And I'm gonna give that a shot and, and let that set overnight and see how well that does. And of course I'll mound up the silicone around the outside edge. I think that's actually gonna be fairly strong. There's not much tension on these joints. Looks pretty good. See what it looks like on this other side. Make sure I didn't move something there. Still looks pretty good. I think we're just gonna let her sit real still for overnight and then try to assess what we ended up with. We're gonna cut a slot, the uh, slider pieces, which I've got it set just below six inches, uh, somewhere between five and, uh, five and seven eighths and uh, 15 sixteenths. So it's just slightly shy of 15 sixteenths. For you metric folks, it's about 15.3 centimeters, something like that. Well, that's pretty cool. I got all those cut out and that was actually pretty fast and pretty easy and really pretty safe. I, you know, I was very cautious of that thing spinning. You can see that it does leave some jaggedness around the edges, especially in some of the early ones that I tried to cut all the way through. The later ones, as I was flipping them over, it didn't leave as much jagged stuff. So, but anyway, either way, I want to file kind of a just, you know, an angle on, on the inside of the hole so that there's nothing that's going to grab the slider as it goes through. Plus, I just want this to be slick so nothing gets caught on it. Well, I have to cut about a dozen of these sliders at 12 and 1 8 inch. The next part of the assembly line after I got all the burrs off of this is to glue up all these pieces. This is the uh, channel part. Well, you can probably see I have a whole stack of these made up. They've been drying about 15-20 minutes. I'm going to turn them over. The bottom obviously has been drying the longest because I made those first. Then I'm going to go ahead and start inserting these. So let's see if it'll go in there now. I just got to be a little careful. I don't want to pry the thing apart and cause it to come apart. There you go. Once you get it going, it goes real nice. And they're nice and snug. I, you know, they're not overly tight. You know, some people have thinned these sliders down, but I don't really think there's a need to do that, especially if I wax them. But right now, I just want to get them in there so I can glue the other parts to them. I think I can probably stack these like put this underneath here and underneath here on the both sides and then just keep stacking these on top of each other with the weight again and I think it's gonna work. That's how I'm gonna to try to do it. It's been overnight and these this one first prototype has dried. This foam on here was just to take up space. I you know that may or may not come off. I, I don't know. It depends on what I'm fitting that up to. 
but uh, I imagine that's going to come off because I think I've got this solved now where everything fits. But uh, right now I'm not worried about that. Yes, uh, a lot of people, I already can feel the comment coming. I should have used epoxy on all of this. Well, I'm just here to tell you, I have never, not ever, and I've tried it dozens and dozens of times. I have never found an epoxy that I can get along with. I know I see it on the internet all the time. Um, I see people using epoxies left and right and just loving them. That has not been my experience and I've tried dozens of epoxies. I can't get along with epoxies. I, and I, you know, it's not like I don't know how to mix half and half. This silicone uh, caulk, 100% silicone, while it's not 100% strong, it's got some flex to it and it's pretty dang strong. On this area here where it's flat, I doubt you could pull that off. On this area here where I just only had that little edge to glue on, this probably could break. I may have to reinforce this down the road. And, you know, I'm not too worried about it. If it breaks, we'll figure it out. Uh, even the company I bought the sink from, they an under sink mount, they said, you don't need to do anything except just put this silicone caulk, mount your porcelain sink up under there, let it dry for three or four days, and it'll never come loose. Well, that's 12 years later, it still hasn't come loose, and all I did was glue the sink under there with this stuff. And that's what they told me to do at the sink company. So this is pretty strong stuff. Be that as it may, and now that I've made you know half the people in the world mad, I'm going to continue this the way I'm going here. I'm taking a screwdriver, going through this joint right here, and it, it seems to just pop up pretty easily. They're not made all that well, and at least most of them have popped loose. Of course, on camera that won't be the case, but. There you go, I got that one loose finally. And see if this one will come loose. So there you go, that's what I'm doing. I'm just popping them out of there. Re I'll reuse both sides. Now this side's got a dish in it. I haven't decided how I'm gonna do that yet. I'll probably just sand the edges of it off and, and just glue around the perimeter is probably what I'll end up doing. This is a little shallow through here, so I'll have to fill in here on this side. But I'll save those for last, do all those at, at one time and figure out a good method. But these are flat, so all I do is take these to the belt sander. I also cut off an inch here, or about three quarters of an inch, to make them a little more symmetrical. Everything is glued together. There are no screws or no nails needed at all. So the only other thing you need, uh, the only other two things you need is, you know, a bottle of tight bond original glue is what I used. All any good wood glue would be fine. And one and just one tube of 100% silicone caulk. Now this is the DAP brand, but any brand of 100% silicone caulk should be fine. Just some general dust collection ideas about your system, and that is, whenever possible, use 45s rather than 90s. In other words, two 45s with a length of pipe between them is better than 190, a sharp 90. And that's for the travel of the material, for one thing, but the airflow works better too. So you notice here, these all go off on 45s rather than a straight 90. Because that way the, the material is, has already started up as it's going into the pipe. Now it's also better if you can suck down and down into your floor and through your system that way, that's better. Anytime you can use gravity to your favor. I can't use gravity in my favor here in this shop because I have solid concrete and you know, I mean it would be just way too much work to tear up the concrete and go down through the floor. So I am sucking upwards, which is not the most efficient, I'll admit, but it's all I've got. And then I go up and I go across the ceiling and I'll show you some tricks about going across the ceiling as well. As you can see, the, you know, the travel direction is very important and you notice there, those are long 45s pulling that way rather than a sharp 90 again. That allows for a better airflow and it allows for better uh, material flow as well. Everything is flowing that way. So it's going that direction. So that pipe that's connected up there is 
it's coming from that way and it flows straight on through. In addition, you notice I have a wire going around this pipe. That's very important. This wire goes to ground on both ends and that keeps all the static out of the pipe and my prior system before I put this wire on there I got shocked every time I used the system. Since I put the wire on there I have not got shocked one single time. It's that significant. It's not just the shocking hazard uh, because it can be a very strong shock but it's also a safety thing for uh, dust is highly explosive. So you know this kills that spark completely and you don't have to worry about your dust you know exploding and catching the place on fire and you know killing somebody. As you can see I am able to use gravity as my friend in this particular situation. So the dust would go in this direction go down and take a 45 into the pipe this way again now a 90 in a vertical wouldn't be too bad you know but you still get an, an, an advantage by using a 45 again because it's sliding the material the direction it needs to go already this is true whether you're talking dust collection or actual sewage you should always use 45s if you can versus a 90 unless it's a, a vertical down a, a vertical 90 down is fine but but otherwise you should try to use 45s if you can so this is more efficient this way again I've got my wire around everything um, and uh, that just gets rid of that spark possibility now I wanted to talk to you about the fact that I, I made all four inch dust gates rather than some twos because I do have two inch hose, see? What I do instead is adapt the fitting so that this fitting is, you know, the, is a four inch, it goes on there and then I take two inch off of the fitting. That is more efficient in my opinion because you're keeping the bigger opening here at the gate you know anytime you can keep a bigger opening and like this pipe drops down into a huge opening see there's nothing there obstructing that as you can see so it just drops down and goes right on into the main pipe so keep your four inch as long as you possibly can and you'll be more efficient in fact if this hose was four inch it'd be way more efficient but I you know you it's not practical to use a vacuum hose this is a long vacuum hose this is what I use to vacuum the floor and everything obviously you, you really need to neck that down to two inch but it would be more efficient and would suck way better if it was four inch just so you understand I believe when you neck down to two inch I think if I remember the math right I think you lose four times the pressure or something like that it's a much bigger factor than you might expect the longer you can stay four inch the better off you are the last little bit make that your two inch if that's what you need to do if you need to go to two inch save the two inch for the least amount possible and your uh, system will be much more uh, powerful if you do it that way all right now that we've got everything finished and all the dust collection ports are installed let's try our pickup test here with the same hose this is this hose is like 20 feet long so you lose a lot of suction in a corrugated hose uh, you know at 20 feet but let's see if it's strong enough to pick up a one pound box now incredibly strong but it definitely does it now and it did not do it before so my friends I feel like I've made a huge accomplishment here in my shop anytime you can more than double your suction power of your system and I know I can tell just by this feel of it and the and the sound of it and everything that I've at least doubled the suction capacity I am one happy man that's going to kill so much of the dust that was escaping and getting all over everything and into the air that I was breathing so I am one tickled guy I hope you found this helpful thank you for watching